International programs. Uh, we've traveled to Guatemala, to Chile, to Ecuador, to Peru, and next year we'll also be doing a new, uh, a new international program. But something that we want to promote and bring awareness to the community is how important it is to promote this between our young audiences, to preserve and strengthen our communities in children at a youth level, and to embrace the fact that we are all coming from different cultural backgrounds. We all want to share and integrate our culture with mainstream cultures. And we all have something unique to share. And that way to express it is through music. That has been our way to do it, my personal way to do it, and some, a model that we believe will be uh, feasible with uh, other people in the city of Stanford and in the greater community. And I just have a question. What type of music do you, do you like here? Classical music, who's your favorite composer? Probably Tchaikovsky. I love Tchaikovsky, yes. Anyone else? It doesn't have to be classical because, I, because I'm a violinist. Yes? Jazz, I like jazz. Jazz, I love jazz too. I love rock and roll. Rock and roll, <laughs> yes? Anybody else? My wife likes Montavani. Okay. Some of the orchestra pre presentations of contemporary music. So do I. Yeah, sure. You gotta hit everything. <laughs> We yes. just have satellite radio, so we do everything from your know, reggae, rock, jazz, country, new wave, just all over the place, and it's, it's fun. It's fun, yes, and it's a great way to connect with everyone, and that's one of the things that we do with Intake as well, partner with a Native Instrument oh, Orchestra, nice. and we fill concert halls to capacity like this at our annual cultural crossover with a thousand people in attendance, um, and we also like, we take pride in that our audiences are from two months old to two to a hundred year olds, oh. so that's something that we look for um, when we're developing audiences and when uh, cultivating the next generation of music lovers, symphony goers, and music supporters. Um, so one of the things that happened to me on a personal level was what we call the aha moment. That was when I traveled to Ecuador and heard an orchestra that instead of violins they had charangos, instead of cellos they had toyos, um, instead of uh, double basses, they had pan flutes, and it was a native instrument orchestra. And that is what we want to accomplish here, but it, at, at an integrated orchestra level, where a violin shares a music stand with a charango, a pan flute shares a music stand with a regular Western classical flute, and then we also are able to bring in Russian instrumentation, native Indian instrumentation, um, steel drum instrumentation from uh, Caribbean cultures, so that the music communication that we're able to accomplish is just international, has no boundaries. Um, and the reason why we promote diversity, we have partnered with organizations alike, like the Sphinx organization, is because when we look at the representation in US populations of orchestral players, 
uh, musicians, African American musicians, are less than two percent in of the orchestra's makeup. Uh, Latinos are less than three percent. Asian American is a, as a growing uh, demographic. But that's something that I encountered when I was sitting in my orchestra and seeing why are people not coming to my concerts or people that look like me coming to support a beautiful Tchaikovsky symphony or beautiful Beethoven and Brahms symphony. So that's why we wanted to make it relevant and reach the students at an early age so that they will be promoting this um, later on. So that's what we call the aha moment. And the reason of why we do what we do is so that we can really show the direct correlation with music and discipline and how that can have an impact in academics. So we know that um, students who have arts in their lives are likely to have outperformed their peers by 75 points on the SATs. And that's something that we're trying and testing out with our high school students next year when they go on to take the SAT after having been members of the Native Instrument Academy. Uh, we also have statistics that show that low socioeconomic students with no arts involvement um, versus with arts involvement are more likely to graduate and attend a four-year high a college and finish a college degree. So since we live in a dynamic, dynamic community where a lot of us are professionals, a lot of us are business owners, some of us are students, we also have day laborers, we have to find a way to bring all of these people together and to make discipline, education, and academic improvement uh, an outcome. So that is why INTIC does what we do through our core program, the Native Instrument Academy. And through this um, musical discovery, we've been able to find that it's been a great way to show the community integration, the social integration, and the perspectives that our families that come to our concerts, that come to our programs, that come to our community centers performances um, are able to find. The sense of empowerment and that sense of belonging by promoting their cultures. Um, so one of the things that we take pride in these past four years is to gain institutional awareness. Um, and something that I would love to share with you via our website or via email communication later on. Um, four years ago, we started on a PBS documentary called Compadre Washayo, which just culminated last March and aired on uh, Connecticut Public Television twice in March and reached over 500,000 viewers and ratings. So we're very happy to have shown that Native Instrument Orchestra that we've worked at an international level and show the people of the United States and of Connecticut what we want to accomplish here through the vision of the integrated orchestra, through the beginning stages of our Native Instrument Academy, as well as the long-term vision of a Native Arts Center here in Stanford that promotes Greek uh, background, Russian background, Indian background, Middle Eastern background, American background, Native American background, as well as Latino American background through this Native Arts Center. So we're very happy about this, grateful about the institutional awareness that INTIC has been able to achieve. You can, or you're welcome to come visit any Monday or Wednesday afternoon and see the Charango Violin Viola and Bilingual Choir classes. But next year we're looking at expanding into the South End, the West Side, the East Side of San so that we can serve the waiting list that we currently have with our students. Um, we, we're planning a major event in the fall with some of our board members, with all of our board members actually. We will be traveling to Nicaragua in March of 2015 to expand our global awareness program. And we also look to have new partnership with India, Cuba, and Ghana so that we can have more diversity within our very own diversity. And then leading into the integrated orchestra, the youth and professional level, and the Native Arts Center. So that is the value proposition that INTEC seeks out to have in, in the Stanford and in the Connecticut community. And um, I want to invite you guys to a concert. It's a night at Studio 54. Um, most of us may know that Studio 54 was a major nightclub in New York City where you could get down and boogie and have fun. <laughs> so I will be performing at this concert on Saturday, May 30th at the Fairfield Theater Company. And this is presented by one of our partner organizations, the Spread Music Now and the B Foundation. And this will be a benefit concert for music education. So I will be sharing the stage with Band Together Connecticut, um, one of my first times playing jazz and, and you know, new music, but I'm excited uh, to be playing at this concert. So I invite you all to visit our website to come 
And with Spread Music Now and the B Foundation, we were given the opportunity to receive a matching grant and to double our impact. So they, they will award us a $5,000 matching grant, and which makes it into $10,000, and they have $2,000 bonus to people that raise the most funds. So one of the things that we are go doing uh, this month and this week until May 30th is promoting this campaign and asking kind people like you to help us achieve our goal, to double the impact, benefiting music education, and also by joining us at the Anaya Studio 54 concert on Saturday, May 30th at the Fairfield Theater Company. Um, so this will all be on our website. You can visit intakemusic.org. Um, and it will link you to the crowd rise or any other videos and, and information that you may want to see. And I also just want to thank uh, Chris for inviting me. I want to invite, uh, thank one of our board members, Eva Maldonado, who, who was uh, key in getting me to meet Chris. Um, also, our advisory board member, Dr. Aaron Dworkin, who's a MacArthur Fellow, um, the new name dean of the University of Michigan. Uh, School of Music, and without the community support, without your support, I as a young social entrepreneur would not have been able to achieve this success and engage the community and engage an entire team that I have, uh, that we have joining the Intec family and joining the Intec movement. So I'm very grateful for all of these opportunities that we've had, grateful to you for hearing me. And uh, I'd like to play a little something to see if you guys recognize this tune. Um, um, so we'll play a game called Name That Tune. Okay, you'll name that tune. <laughs> and I'll try to play diverse genres to, to fit your taste. Sting. What's the piece? Uh, sting. 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 The music from Sting. 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 The theme song. Hamlet. Uh, <laughs> cultural understanding. That is what uh, we set out to do four years ago, and that's what we will seek to do for the next four, 40, and 400 years. So um, so this is the charango. I am not a charango player, unfortunately, but I've learned a few chords. But the story of this instrument is that when the Spaniards came to the Americas, they brought the Spanish guitar. And the natives, the Indians, did not they wanted to play Spanish guitar, but they didn't have one. So they figured out a way to make this. So they grabbed an armadillo, because the armadillos were shaped like this. They grabbed the armadillo shell, and they put strings and figured out a way to make it sound like theirs. So this is higher pitched because it embodies the, the Andes Mountains. And this sounds like Latin America immediately. And they made it this way, they made it smaller than the Spanish guitar because they were not, they were not allowed to practice music back then. So they could hide it in their ponchos um, and nobody would notice oh, that I they have they a native instrument. So that is why we are promoting this, preserving this instrument that at a point it was banned from uh, a, a country in Latin America, from Chile, for example, because it, re it reflected, it represented um, people wanting to express themselves and not being able to express themselves because they were under the dictatorship. So, <laughs> any questions? Cards? Yes, I have some cards and a, 
annual report to Yeah, I want you to play one foot song. Another another oh. piece? Yeah, you wanted you to play a full song, you uh, said. Full piece? Sure, I'll play a full piece. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a piece called uh, Quiero Ser Tu Sombra, I Want to Be Your Shadow from um, uh, Venezuela.